On today's culture show, we've got a band who've been called Restless Sonic Chameleons. The Fiery Furnaces are an American brother and sister duo. They make playful, unpredictable indie pop. Their latest album, Take Me Round Again, is a cover of their previous album, I'm Going Away, and it's their ninth. They're on tour and they're playing in Paris this week. And I'm pleased to say one half of the twosome joins me now, Elena Friedberger. Thanks very much for coming into Ponce Van Cat. Thank you for having me. Let's start by listening to one of the tracks off the album. It's called Even in the Rain. Thanks very much for coming and talking to us, as I said. Now, even in the rain, we saw there, it's on your eighth and your ninth album. Try exactly. and explain the concept a little bit to us. Um, well, for a couple of reasons. First, we always play our songs very differently live, and so it made perfect sense to, to do that in an album form as well, to rework and rearrange the songs. We don't feel like our songs are very precious in that way. There's no one way, right, right, right way to play them. Why do you um, play them so differently live? Because I've been to see you. I came last mm -hmm. time you were here in Paris and you're a lot more aggressive than yes. when you listen <laughs> to you at home. We make a huge point in, uh, to, to play differently live because we feel like, you know, an audience can just stay at home and listen to the record and have that experience. And live, it should be a very different experience. And um, we want to give people a reason to come see us and to see us over and over again. We, we, we play differently from tour to tour as well. I'm um, Going Away is very accessible album I would say mm -hmm. compared to maybe your other ones did you set out to be more accessible to be a little bit not mainstream but a little bit more mainstream uh, we don't think of it as being more accessible necessarily but the album prior to I'm going away was a, was a very complicated live record that was over two hours long um, so we wanted to, to do something as, like a reaction to that record um, that would sound like a group of people playing you know friends playing in a basement together which is exactly how we how we did it was the first record that we didn't go into a, a recording studio to make. We, we did it all at home. Um, and it was supposed to sound very casual and very spontaneous. One thing I read about you is you're bringing out a silent record. <laughs> Can yes. you explain what that, that means? That will be our next release. I haven't been able to find it yet. It's, it, I think it will be out maybe in the fall. Um, but it's going to be a book, a songbook, essentially. Um, a very long songbook, maybe over 200 pages. Um, and the idea is to <clears throat> release the book in record stores without any audio um, component at all and that we'll have, host a series of concerts after the book comes out where other people will play the music from the book. So it'll be traditional um, uh, you know, sheet music and then also some more non-traditional um, notation for, for improvisation. Now, the Fiery so Furnaces excited. are known for being quite wacky. I think that's <laughs> fair to say. Do you ever get worried that you're going to run out of that wackiness? Oh, no. Or run out of no. ideas? No, no. I mean, it's great to having the both of us, my brother and I, you know, really feed off of each other. So as long as we keep thinking up new games to play, you know, I think we'll be fine. And how does the brother and sister duo work exactly how did you start <laughs> out in the beginning because you were more into sport he came last time and told me that oh, you were right. more into sport and he was as the a musician. kid yeah he started playing when he was very young i didn't start playing guitar and singing until i was about 18. um and after he moved to new york shortly after i did and i'd already started playing on my own and i really recruited him to be in the band because i was more i don't know better at the social networking side of things and had, had had shows lined up and I needed help so 
I asked my big brother to play with me. And you've been touring hard basically ever since. You were in Paris like just over six months ago. Yeah. Do you think the French get your wackiness? <laughs> I think that they can appreciate our um, eccentricities, yeah. And you've done nine albums. What's your next project? It's going to be the book. That, that's really the thing we're working hardest on now. I'm not sure when the next record will come out after that. And if people come and see you this week, what, which version of which album are they going to see on stage? Um, it will be similar to our last our last show in Paris. Again, like an, an aggressive uh, rock band. You would never think that you're aggressive seeing you talking here. Well, we'll be on television tonight playing one of our songs too. You can have a sneak peek of what the show will be like. Okay. All right, yeah. Eleanor, thanks very much for coming Thank and speaking you. to us. Thank Maybe next time us. we can have both of oh. the duo here and see how that really works. <laughs> Okay, and they'll be playing in Paris on the 18th of February at the Boule Noir. Now away from here, and let's head to the ancient city of Luang Prabang in northern Laos. The river town is hosting its second international photography show, the goal to bring together all types of expression. Luang Prabang, the former capital of the ancient kingdom of a million elephants, a jewel of Asia untouched by time, where people spend quiet days on the banks of the Mekong River. Organizing an international photography festival here was a challenge in itself to gather artists from around the world. If I stand here, it's funny because it looks like it's following me. And then if I move like this over here, it will continue to look at me. It follows my eyes. Dozens of pictures, including political ones, are shown here, a rare occurrence in Laos. The most renowned Lao photographer, Razi, is also here, the photographer of the unfathomable. The main principle in my photography is to start with deleting the human species from the picture. The human is indeed the only thing absent in my work. It is because he is absent from Mother Nature, and nature represents the essence, the very base of my work. It is essential for me to photograph in this way. This is my inspiration, my unique source for all my pictures. Also shown here is the work of Indian photographer Achinto Badra, who colorfully captures Indian women victims of Calcutta's brutality. And then there's the metaphorical and surrealistic provocations of Singaporean Shenzhen, who denounces the city-state's regime. You know, these gatherings between Koreans, Singaporeans, and of course Laotians, they make me very enthusiastic and happy. We have here people who really engage with their work. But that's not all. It's also an exchange of characters, people who otherwise wouldn't have a chance to meet. It's a real pity that these kind of gatherings don't exist in France anymore. Even showcased here is the work of French photographer Denis Darzac, whose art revolves around the theme of consumption. They seem out of place here in the middle of this sleepy town surrounded by temples built centuries ago. It's a chance to showcase the downside of modernization dreamed by so many Laotians today. The exhibition also provides the chance to bridge one world with another through photography. And that brings us to the end of the Culture Show. Thanks very much for joining us today. I'll see you tomorrow.